Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your strength. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and oppressors have sought after my life. They have not set God before them. Selah. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with those who uphold my life. He will repay my enemies for their evil. Cut them off in your truth. I will freely sacrifice to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me out of all trouble, and my eye has seen its desire upon my enemies. My name's Arthur. Thank you for joining me as we share together Psalm 54. Psalm 54 is one of a set of the Psalms of David where he responds to unprovoked attacks against him. And it's instructive for us to see how he responds. This particular psalm has prefixed to the chief musician with stringed instruments a contemplation of David when the Ziphites went and said to Saul, Is David not hiding with us? The story had been that the Lord had blessed David and he'd become very successful in King Saul's court. And King Saul became jealous when the young women of the city started singing, Saul has killed his thousands, David his ten thousands. And he harboured that jealousy and it grew until David had to flee from his court. In that emergency situation, he'd fled to the priests at Nob and sought some food from them and a weapon. And they supporting him, although he didn't explain to them that he was on the run from King Saul. Consequently, when King Saul heard that they had helped him, he ordered the execution of those priests and their families. Hundreds of people killed all because they helped David with some food. This was a heavy burden for David. But he had no right or power to go and fight Saul, for Saul was the Lord's anointed also to be king of Israel. So David had fled into the wilderness, and he was trying to keep out of Saul's way. And many others came to join David, whose lives were at risk from King Saul. But as he lived there, the people of Ziph, his neighbours, instead of providing shelter for him, went and reported to King Saul, David is among us. And so here, people who had no beef at all with David sought to ingratiate themselves with the king by reporting where David was. And so that's the background here for this psalm. The characteristic of these psalms is that they are an expression of David's reliance upon God, even though he is under severe attack. He doesn't seek strength to fight back. He looks to God to save. The principle was laid out in Psalm 50, the psalm of Asaph, which said, Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you, and you shall glorify me. David is not just concerned to justify himself. He wants the Lord to save him and to justify him and show that the Lord is the one who is victorious. Now, this is a parallel to the situation with the Lord Jesus today. The Lord Jesus has done no harm. He went about doing good, but there are people who hate him. They can't get at him, and so they kill others who promote the name of the Lord Jesus. And throughout the last 2,000 years, that has happened. Many people who have confessed Jesus as Lord, as the coming King, as their Saviour, have been killed by those who hate God. They can't get at God, but they can get at those who acknowledge him. And so the situation pertains to us today. How do we respond when people attack us without justification? David's attempts were to keep out of Saul's way. 
he with the 600 men and their families who are with him. In a wilderness situation, they had no permanent home. Any situation they got was temporary. And that is what it is for us. Well, let's look more closely at the words of this psalm. Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your strength. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and oppressors have sought after my life. They have not set God before them. Selah. David is calling upon the Lord, because people he doesn't know have risen up against him. They have sought to destroy his life. These are people who have not honoured God, because if you respect God, then you will respect man made in the image of God. But by seeking to destroy David, who was God's servant, they are not honouring God. As Jesus would later say, if you loved my father, you would love me also. It is the father's will that we should honour the son as we honour the father. People can profess that they love God, but if they deny the Lord Jesus Christ, then they do not love God. They have not set God before them, because God says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. David's prayer was, Save me, O God, by your name. Vindicate me by your strength. David was not taking matters into his own hand. He was calling upon the Lord to help. Now, of course, David would have to do something. The Lord would lead him in the path he should take, and the Lord gave him instructions about where he was to go, not to go to foreign territory, but to stay in the wilderness. There in the wilderness he would be subject to attack, but it was there where he was subject to attack that the Lord could show his hand. And so in this case, after the Ziphites' report, Saul came to catch David. And he got very close to him. David was on one side of the hill and Saul was on the other side. Saul was closing in. But the Lord delivered David, sending a message to Saul saying, The Philistines have attacked. So Saul had to leave his chase after David. David goes on, Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with those who uphold my life. There are those who are on God's side whom God helps. And the Lord is with those who uphold David. He will repay my enemies for their evil. Cut them off in your truth. So the enemies are not justified in their attacks. Saul, in condemning the priests, said, David is lying in wait for me. But that was a lie. David was not lying in wait for Saul. David subsequently had several opportunities that he could have killed Saul, and he refused to. But the person who is attacking will always justify themselves. But if it is not in truth, then they are against God. And God will repay my enemies for their evil. Cut them off in your truth. When the Lord judges, it will be in truth and righteousness. And those who have opposed God will acknowledge that God has dealt justly with them. I will freely sacrifice to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me out of all trouble, and my eye has seen its desire upon my enemies. Well, at the time David wrote this, I'm sure he hadn't yet seen the victory, but he had seen it by faith. He knew that in the end God would be vindicated. And so he was happy to pull out his musical instruments and freely offer the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that give glory to him. For he has delivered me out of all trouble. David would have much trouble in his life, but he would die in peace, though he was a man of war, because he was the Lord's servant. And so by faith, He could say, The Lord has delivered me out of all trouble. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good.